Sandra D was an American actress. D began her career as a child model, working first in commercials and then film in her teenage years. Best known for a portrayal of Ingenies, D earned a Golden Globe Award as one of the year's most promising newcomers for a performance in Robert Wise's Until They Sail in 1958. She became a teenage star for her subsequent performances in Imitation of Life and Gidget, both in 1959, which made her a household name. By the late 60s, her career had started to decline, and a highly publicised marriage to Bobby Darren ended in divorce. The year of her divorce, Dee's contract with Universal Pictures was dropped. She attempted a comeback with the 1970 independent horror The Dunwich Horror, but rarely acted after this time appearing only occasionally in television programmes during the 70s and 80s. Dee's final years were marred with illness. She died in 2005 of complications from kidney disease, brought on by a lifelong struggle with anorexia. Dee was born Alexandria Zook on the 23rd of April 1942 in New Jersey, the only child of John Zook and Mary Zook, who met as teenagers at a Russian Orthodox church dance. They married shortly afterwards, but divorced before Sandra was five years old. She was raised in the Russian Orthodox faith. Her son, Dodd Darren, wrote his biographical book about his parents, dream lovers, that Dee's mother Mary and her aunt Olga were first-generation daughters of a working-class Russian Orthodox couple. Dee recalled, We belonged to a Russian Orthodox church, and there was dancing and social events. Alexandra would soon take the name Sandra D. She became a professional model by the age of four, and subsequently progressed to TV commercials. There's some dispute as to Dee's actual year of birth, with evidence pointing to both 1942 and 1944. Legal records, including her California divorce record from Bobby Darren, as well as Social Security Debt Index and her own gravestone, all gave the year as 1942. In a 1967 interview with Oxner Press Courier, she acknowledged being 18 in 1960 when she first met Bobby Darren, and the couple were wed three months later. According to her son's book, Dee was born in 1944, but having begun modelling and acting at a very early age, she and her mother falsely inflated her age by two years so she could find more work. Dee's parents divorced in 1950, and her mother then married a man who had been sexually abusing Sandra and continued to do so after marrying her mother. Producer Russ Hunter claimed to have discovered Dee on Park Avenue in New York City with her mother when she was 12 years old. In a 1959 interview, Dee recalled that she grew up fast, surrounded mostly by older people, and she was never held back in anything she wanted to do. During her modelling career, Dee attempted to lose weight to be as skinny as high fashion models. Although an improper diet ruined her skin and nails and everything, having slimmed down, her body was unable to digest any food she ate, and it took the help of a doctor for her to regain her health. According to the actress, she could have killed herself and had to learn to eat all over again. In spite of the damaging effects on her health, Dee earned a generous $75,000 in 1956. $705,000 $705,000 today, working as a child model in New York, which she used to support herself and her mother after the death of her stepfather. According to sources, Dee's large modelling salary was more than she would ever come to earn as an actress. Ending a modelling career, Dee moved from New York to Hollywood in 1957. After studying at the Hollywood Professional School, she graduated from University High School in Los Angeles in 1958. Dee's on-screen debut was in 1957 for the MGM movie Until They Sail, directed by Robert Wise. To promote, she appeared in the December issue of Modern Screen in a column by Luella Parsons, who praised the young girl and compared her looks and talent to those of Shirley Temple. Her performance made her one of the year's winners of the Golden Globe Award for New Star, Actress. MGM cast her as the lead in the film The Reluctant Debutant in 1958, alongside John Saxon as a romantic co-star. It was the first of several films they made together. She provided the voice for The Snow Queen in 1957. 
and in 1958 she was signed with Universal Pictures as one of the last contract players prior to the dissolution of the old studio system. She took the lead role in The Restless Years in 1958 for producer Ross Hunter, opposite Saxon and Teresa Wright. She followed this with another for Hunter, The Stranger in My Arms, in 1959. Dee's third film for Hunter had the biggest impact. Imitation of Life in 1959, opposite Lana Turner. The film became a wild box office success, grossing $50 million. At the time, it was Universal Pictures' highest grossing film in history and made Dee a household name. She was subsequently loaned to Columbia Pictures to play the titular character in beach comedy Gidget in 1959. It was a solid hit and helped spawn the beach party genre, leading to two sequels two television series, and two television movies, although Dee did not appear in any of these. For a complete change of pace, Universal then cast her opposite Audie Murphy in a Western romantic comedy The Wild and the Innocent in 1959. Warner Brothers borrowed her for another melodrama in the vein of imitation of life, A Summer Place, in 1959, opposite Troy Donahue as a romantic co-star. The film was a massive hit, that year, the US box office exhibitors voted her the 16th most popular star in the country. She then reunited with both Lana Turner and John Saxon in Universal's Portrait of Black in 1960, a thriller that was a financial success, despite receiving harsh reviews. Dee was the nation's seventh most biggest star by the end of 1960. Peter Yusnoff used her as the lead in Cold War comedy Romanoff and Juliet in 1961, In 1960, she met Bobby Darren while filming Come September, which was released the following year. The pair married just after filming in December 1960, and on December 16, 1961, she gave son to their birth, Dodd Mitchell Darren, also known as Morgan Mitchell Darren. In 1961, Dee still had three years on a universal contract, and she signed a new one for seven years. Newlyweds Dee and Darren appeared together in a romantic comedy If a Man Answers in 1962. She appeared in a final Tammy film, Tammy and the Doctor, in 1963. She had another big hit comedy with Take Her, She's Mine, playing a character loosely based on Nora Ephron. That year she was voted the eighth biggest star in the country. It would be her last appearance in the top ten. By the end of the 60s, Dee's career had slowed significantly and she was dropped by Universal Pictures. Dee rarely acted following a 1967 divorce from Bobby Darren. In an interview with Robert Ebert, Dee reflected on her experience in the studio system and the image that had been foisted upon her. She said, look at this, holding up a cigarette. I like to smoke. I'm 25 years old. It happens that I like to smoke. So out in Hollywood, the studio press agents are still pulling cigarettes out of my hand and covering my drink with a napkin whenever a picture's taken. Little Sandra Dee isn't supposed to smoke, you know, or drink, or breathe. She made a comedy at MGM, Doctor You've Got to Be Kidding, in 1967, which was a mild success. Ross Hunter acted to come back to Universal in a co-starring role in Rosie. The film was not a success. Dee was then inactive in the film industry for a few years, before appearing in 1970 in the American International Pictures occult horror, The Dunwich Horror, which was a loose adaptation of an H.P. Lovecraft story, as a college student who finds herself at the centre of an occult ritual plot. During the 70s, Dee took roles sporadically on episodes of several television series, appearing in Night Gallery, Fantasy Island and Policewoman. Her final film performance was the low-budget drama Lost in 1983. In her later years, she told a Newark, New Jersey newspaper that she felt like a has-been that never was. Dee's later years were marked by poor health, and she became a self-described recluse after retiring from acting. She battled anorexia, depression and alcoholism for many years. She quit drinking altogether after being diagnosed with kidney failure in 2000, attributed to years of heavy drinking and smoking. In 1994, Dodd Darren published a book about his parents, Dream Lovers, The Magnificent Shattered Lives of Bobby Darren and Sandra Dee. 
in which he chronicled his mother's anorexia, drug and alcohol problems, and that she'd been sexually abused as a child by her stepfather. The same year, Dee had a final acting credit, a voice-only appearance in an episode of Frasier. On February 20th, 2005, Dee died in a hospital in California at the age of 62 from complications from kidney disease. She was interred in a crypt at Forest Lawn Memorial Park Cemetery in Hollywood Hills, California. Thank you.